Good morning. Good morning, children. Oh, boy. I'm not even up, and I'm already pissed. You guys think this job is just you flip, you flip the switch, and, and then the money just comes out of the sky. That would be hot chicks with big boobs, okay? Here, I'm dealing with this teachable account. Oh, by the way, if you guys are interested, my minimalism class is live. Now, we'll be live until January 6th. But none of the affiliate links went out because Teachable is full of a bunch of fucking cunts. That's basically what it boils down to. But we're not here to yell about my problems or Teachable's ineptitude. We're here to talk about Roald Tomasi's uh, The Rational Male Preventive. Preventive. <clears throat> not preventative, which is also grammatically correct. I looked up on that. That was preventative. It's both grammatically correct, but his is preventive medicine, which is, I believe, the second in his trilogy thus far. And the only reason I'm reviewing the second of his trilogy is because the fourth in his quadrupopoly, uh, his latest book, is it out yet? Like, yeah, but, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come. Okay, cool. Let me know. Okay. Was it? But was it? By, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. What is it coming out? Yes, yeah, coming out pretty soon. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Has it come out yet? No, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm like, oh, God, fine. I'll do this one. <clears throat> and like TJ's book, I, uh, I uh, could listen to it because it's an audiobook. I had a nice long drive across Wisconsin, so I was able to get a fair amount of uh, Rolo's book, and it's a little bit longer, obviously. Um, it was good, and it was good. Uh, oh, I better pull up my, I took notes while driving on my phone, uh, while driving in the car on my phone, which is, of course, completely illegal. Uh, because as you know, Rolo's works are not light. And that's not a slam. It's just, it's just a fact. He, he writes, because <clears throat> I had never read any of Rolo's work before until the first Rational Mail book. I'm like, you know, I'd be hiking in the forest. There'd be nothing to distract me. I'm like, I gotta rewind that. What did, and this is as um, intense and dense, not in a dumb way, but a lot of information packed into a couple few sentences where you really got to pay attention to every word. And I'm starting to wonder if my books are like that because I know people that are very intellectual. I'm like, they love this. And then they, they can't, eh, it was all right. I'm like, all right. Did you read the darn thing? <clears throat> Especially my millennial book, How Not to Become a Millennial. That one I thought, and, and, and no one, uh, it was all right. I'm like, that's the most profound work on politics and economics in the past 10 years. <clears throat> and so I think if you're going to read this book, you really can't be doing anything else. And I think that's just generally to be said about Rollo because he's trying to convey not only a lot of information, but a lot of new information and new concepts and new ideas <clears throat> uh, that even if you are versed in the vocabulary and the jargon of the red pill and the manister and the like, it, you're still going to be like, uh, uh, uh. and um, gosh, I can only imagine what it's like, you know, me, I'm kind of a veteran guy and we've talked and discussed red pill philosophy and things like that. I can only imagine if this is some new kid who's 16 or 17 and has no idea and his single mother just dropped him off at the library and he picks this book up. So, uh, just just a caveat, um, it's 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 a dense, thick read, and uh, until you understand the concept he conveys beforehand, um, you shouldn't read on until you can build on that. You know? So it's like math; you should until you got your addition down, man. Don't try subtraction until you got your addition and subtraction. Don't try multiplication, and then you, then you move on to division <clears throat> and slowly work your way up to calculus. Um, so that's one of the drawbacks. It's, these are no faults of his own. It's just it's just the nature of his work. Some people prefer the thicker, more hefty stuff. Uh, I do, but I'm such a impatient individual. I'm like, get that, get that out of my money. Which is why I really like Rich Cooper's book, his newest one, Unplugged Alpha. Even though nobody likes Rich Cooper. People like his books. They just don't like him. <laughs> All right. Um Another, it's not a drawback. It's a, <clears throat> this is just a, it's, it's a, a I guess it's a drawback. Uh, <clears throat> is that he's, he's breaking ground. It's new work back then. Um, 
and so whereas you could have if you already have the knowledge built up and you have some basic terminology and all that uh, you could kind of go over concepts a little more quickly in advance and have it be more succinct and, and spartan uh, in the number of topics it covers but keep in mind this book was written i don't know how many years some, some time ago now and it was rollo breaking new ground introducing new concepts and so by necessity he has to go into this detail <clears throat> to explain these concepts and to build on them and all that so his his natural writing style i think is to be thorough and complete but also because you're covering new ground in the, in the nature of the topic you're compelled to also be thorough and complete then also you're like well if any of you have listened to Rollo tomasi for a significant period of time or consumed any of his, his videos, even though it's not organized on his in his videos, you will have gotten some of these concepts down already. Uh, like, uh, not necessarily the wall, but uh, the epiphany phase or the um, uh, you know, love hierarchies and things like that. There are a couple concepts in this book I hadn't heard before, so it was, it was interesting. That was the new stuff. But for those of you that are somewhat well-versed in this, um, you're going to be like, okay, okay, I get it. Yes, yes, I got the example. It's There's some of it that's not going to be new to you, but at the same time, you're going to miss out on other stuff in the book. If you don't pay attention to what he's saying, even though you could probably finish his sentence, you better read that sentence because the next sentence is that new bit of information that you didn't get or role doesn't cover a lot in the topics or uh, some interesting topics that people hadn't talked about uh, regular that is a part of your regular weekly consumption or canon of uh, the red pill world um what was it? It's my my texting my my notes are not all that clear because uh <clears throat> yeah and that's just for those of you any anyone who's somewhat of a regular that the key tenants are not that's what is key tenants a tenets, tenets, not tenets. I'm like, what? Uh, the key tenets are nothing new, but for I, I would still read through it, um, especially the later chapters, because there's some stuff there that's not as, as commonly covered. Uh, now, what is, I guess I should tell you what it's about. Uh, and I was kind of confused why I called it preventative me medicine, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, basically, if you guys are, you know, you heard Rollo commonly talk about the epiphany phase. Well, what the intention of this book was, was to focus on the different phases in life that women go through. So there's the party phase, their career phase, or they don't call it career phase, the epiphany phase. And then, uh, what is it? Get married and fuck over your husband phase. <laughs> Make your husband's life miserable phase. <laughs> Bitch and wine and neck phase. <laughs> uh, and then the rediscovery phase. And, oh, the eat, pray, love phase. Idiots is a call that they're a little bit more <clears throat> professional uh, phases. But what he was uh, talking about is he wanted to paint a chronological timeline of these phases women go through to show you uh, one, why they're in these phases, two, what kind of behavior the, they're going to have during these phases, why those behavior, why they're doing those behaviors. And as time goes on and women are given more information and of course their looks deteriorate, you know, how they change, what they tell themselves, v again, very thorough, very thorough, like what's going on in their mind. And so you got to pay attention. And this gives then men the kind of a, a template, uh, a guideline, to understand the general arc of a woman's life as it pertains to dating and romance and love and <clears throat> marriage and, and stuff like that. Uh, but then he also, it's not just focusing on the women, but he also then says, he, he kind of does the same thing with men. He parallels it around, although the main arc is to focus on, on the phases of women are in. But men are now in this phase. How are the girls treating the boys their own age at this phase? Uh, how do women treat men that are not their age? The, but, oh, obviously, when the younger gals want to start dating the <clears throat> older, richer men. The old, the cougar phase where, where oh, but now I'll, I'll date a little bit younger. You know, it's me and, and, and validation and all that other stuff. But as he goes through the different phases of, that the women are going through, he goes through what men are also thinking. What's going on there? What are the inner dynamics between men and women at that point? What should you do? What should you think? 
why this is wrong for you to feel this way, why that you should consider it that way. <clears throat> so it's not just like, oh, let me go through this stuff and there you go, which would be helpful unto itself. But it's like, here's how you interact. Here's why this is happening to you or what's going to happen to you or what happened to you. Um, one of the, you know, he even goes in and says, sir, those of you who are older, you may be tempted to jump up to the phase that, that the girls you're interested are in. But he says, you should probably go read about the earlier stages where a classic example is you're dating your high school sweetheart. You both go to college. Oh yeah. You're going to do the long distance thing. And then why did she dump me two or three weeks? And it's very simple because there's a ton of peen around <laughs> ton of high quality, more quality peen than yours. And that's the short answer. Uh, and he, but then he says, okay, and here's where you will be mentally and how, if you don't get over that or understand it, your trajectory is going to be a little bit different and, and for the worse. Uh, so that's generally what the book is about. Arc of women, reaction, responses, details, interactions, understanding, like what happened. That's basically my latest book is, is basically what happened. You know, so you understand it's too late now, but you at least, oh, okay, that's why, oh, you're no longer confused. So there's a fair amount of sanity and <clears throat> peace of contentment you can get with this book. Um, and it, and it, and if you, it's good, but man, it's a slog. I, I won't lie. And the the paradox that, uh, well, Roll is going to face two paradox. One, younger men, just they're real. You guys are going to really have to sit down and take it a bite at a time to comprehend, understand, cement your understanding before you move on. <clears throat> Those of you men who are a little bit older, you're like, oh, yeah, I got the concepts down. You could probably go through the book. And there'll still be some insights. But the second drawback, and this is in, in the title, um, it's preventive medicine. And he says, we we got to learn from this arc, these cycles, and men's reaction to them, as well as what society tells men and women. We got to help young men avoid this, or at least understand it so they don't go through the pain and agony uh, that we did, or confusion at minimum, but also that they might have success, or they might not get divorced, or they... You know, oh, it's so tragic when he gets that, that. That's one of the main recurring themes <clears throat> is, uh, you know, the girl goes out and parties and uh, what was it? This is why she's happier for a, a crappy ring made of a gum wrapper than a man who spends $5,000 on a wedding ring. And uh, just what a high percent of women settle when they get married because they wanted that that alpha cock. And they got it and they thought they could have, you know, classic alpha widow stuff. But then he goes into it in like kind of painful detail. It's like, yeah, you're her second choice, third choice, maybe even fourth choice. And it's it's funny because it's true. <clears throat> funny in a dark, deathly comedy tragedy sort of way. Um, and we, that some of you have been there, so you understand that. But if this is preventive medicine, and it's going to be targeting young men. That's the problem. That's not that I have with this book. It's it's the problem that this book is going to face and roll as intent. Guys, I don't know how we get to younger guys. I don't. I know a lot of younger guys come here, but it's usually after they've already been hurt or something like that. They're confused. They went through a, a, a horrific and tortured environment. Even you think, oh, 22 is not that old. Dude, that's like almost 10 years of puberty. 10 years of confusion and pain and in an environment like school and college where it's, where it's, oh, it's horrific. And, you know, I always talk about my finance books where it's like, look, the time to do it is now when you're 14, get some working skills, learn how to fix cars, learn how to fix computers, uh, you know, teach yourself some languages. There's no reason to wait until a kid is 22 and spent damn well near a decade confused and tortured by this stuff, not to mention going to <clears throat> colleges and universities that where they're absolutely even went. And then they're dumped out at 22, 23. And then finally, maybe they get around, you know, they're out of the matrix. They're out of the system. They could say, they search. Why can't I find the girls? How do I find the girls? And that then they discover it. Well, already one phase is over. Um, you gotta, And you've already suffered your pain. <clears throat> and you'll, no doubt, if you take it at, at 22 years old, that's still pretty young. There's still some indoctrination up until 25, 26, even up to 30. We're like, I'll do what the girls tell me because I, that you do what you want. I mean, it's logical. 
I do this to get the girls? Okay, I will do that to get the girls. Why can't I find the girls? Did you do what a gal told you to do to get the girl? Yeah, I was a nice guy. Well, now you're up to almost two decades lost of confusion and pain. But I don't know how you get young boys to listen. Even if you were to get into the schools, or not necessarily the schools, but that age bracket and that age range, <clears throat> I don't know how you get young men to listen. I don't know how you get anybody young to listen. I don't know if you get anyone, period, to listen. And the experience I've had with this, and I can testify to it, is uh, my book, Worthless. That was written in 2011 about not majoring in stupid shit. Well, how, how many? I didn't stop nobody. <laughs> I stopped a couple thousand people. Um, but I think you have to, and this is the irony of, of wisdom. Wisdom, you, you can't force it. You can't force it on anyone. The only way people are going to listen to wisdom is, is if they've suffered pain and misery. Uh, they've paid a price. This is why at Asshole Consulting, I charge because ain't nobody going to listen. This is why my uh, seminar on minimalism, $499, available today, by the way, at the Clary School of Economic Philosophy. You could Google search it. <coughs> That's why I charge so people pay the fuck attention and do it. But if you're this kid and mom and dad and the government is paying for everything and you don't really have to work and you know you have student loans, I can pay those back later. And you have a, a, a cocoon of an environment telling you basically blue pill lies. Uh, Rolo's book is not going to penetrate that. And any book is not going to penetrate that. Uh, it's not going to get to their minds. And it's kind of, what was it? Uh, was it? Was it Jesus said? Don't try to sell them Christianity until their their spirits are open or something, something to that uh, extent. Even Roll says don't don't try to force the red pill on people. That don't, you got to be wait until they're ready. Um, but that's kind of the the one tragedy, I guess, of this book is if it's preventive medicine. I, the real challenge is not outlining uh, outlining. Uh, what Rollo did and explain it's all right. He did a good job. I like the organization chronologically, how he does that. The real job is how do you get people to take preventive medicine or preventative medicine? And that might be the real book there. That might be the real, if, if any point in time you guys can figure out how to get a teenager to listen, you can write a book and make billions of dollars. Uh, but that's, that's that kind of the, it's not even a problem I have. Not, none of the whatever drawbacks or critiques I've had of the book have nothing to do with Rolo. It, it's just, it's the book itself. So it's it's more like an academic book for guys who went through war. And, you know, you want to read through it like, oh, that's what happened. Oh, that makes a lot of sense now. So I got that there. All right, let's get through some super chats real quick. My snows, two bucks. Happy New Year, Cappy. Two bucks for the poo take fund. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to be doing a fundraiser for Athens Vasectomy Fund here uh, pretty soon. Nonstop trade, two bucks. Uh, does Rolo still stand you up? He always stands me up. Always. Who doesn't he stand up? No one's met him. He could be a holograph for all we know. We don't know who he is. It could just be a really super advanced AI fooling us all. Oh, sure. He played the guitar on Sunset Boulevard. Sure, he did. Sure, he did. Um, yeah, I think next time I go out west, he he might actually meet up with me. Uh, I'll stop, Dre, again. Most people only learn via pain. Few are wise. Yeah, yeah. And that's another thing. I don't know if you can really appreciate the wisdom or the knowledge you get unless you yourself have gone through pain. Like, I see this. I know this one kid. <clears throat> this kid came out great. Um, his dad is a friend of mine, and this kid came out great. Kid ended up uh, just marrying this wonderful She's a, I don't even believe she's right. I got to keep poking her in the shoulders. Like, are you real? Uh, and of course she's a redhead. So I've got a little bit of a bias there. Um, but I'm like wondering, does this kid know how far advanced he is? Does he have any clue? Cause he's making all the right moves, but like, yeah, he made no wrong moves. So he doesn't know how <clears throat> valuable it is that he went through it uh, because he didn't suffer no pain. And I'm like, can he, can he really, because, me and his old man, he, he brought the girl back. We're like, listen, kid, you're not, it's not going to get any better than that. Because <laughs> we suffered. We went through. We did it. It's like, you know, but does he know? Does he appreciate? Does he have any clue? Uh, the ETC shadow. Five bucks. Here lies the body of Aaron Clary. Died of AIDS from his GF Mary. For 36 years, he kept his sanity 
though his life was just a calamity. Thank you. <laughs> Are we caught up? We're caught up. All right, there you go. I'll be on <coughs> with rule zero in uh, hour 15. Yeah, an hour 15. And um, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about this damn teachable shit. So uh, tune into that. I, I think um, I think it's on Rolo's channel. Uh, and then also for those of you interested, the minimalism class is now available. You just search Aaron Clary Teachable or the Clary School of Economic Philosophy. And you know what? Just go to my blog, Captain Capitalism at blogspot.com. I put a little post there. And it should it should work. It should. We'll find out. See you guys later. Toodle.